Thank you so much for coming in today and joining our session on ergonomics. We have uh, Dr. Riddhi Atwani who is taking the session today. I'll give you a brief introduction about the doctor and then she will take over uh, the stage and present you her uh, information. Dr. Riddhi Atwani is the founder of uh, Dave's uh, Physioga and is also a physiotherapist with a demonstrated history of working in health, wellness and fitness industry with all-round experience of the subject. Uh, Dr. Reddy is a strong healthcare services professional with a fellowship diploma in sports rehabilitation from the London Academy of Sports and Health Sciences and she also has a bachelor degree focused in physiotherapy from VSPM College of Physiotherapy. She is a very skilled physiotherapist in yoga, ergonomics, physical therapy and orthopedic rehabilitation and neurology with specialization in advanced rehab techniques. So I'm sure uh, today we are all in very, very safe hands. And uh, doctor, uh, I would uh, like you to take the stage and, uh, and you know, uh, take us through your presentation. Firstly, thank you so much now, for such a lovely intro. <laughs> my pleasure, doctor, my pleasure. A very good afternoon to all of you. I hope all of you are doing good and uh, safe in this time. And um, this is probably my first session with Ethica and looking forward to many more sessions with them. Let's um, take it forward from here. And like first and foremost, I think uh, we all should know who is a physiotherapist actually. And uh, physiotherapists are actually, you know, movement and function experts who, I, uh, who give you advices on how to prevent muscle and bone disorders, joint disorders. So I'll, uh, in your day-to-day -day activities and ergonomists are people who give you advice regarding how you should function in your office who you know uh, in a more optimal way to prevent injuries and how you should uh, arrange your uh, office setup or in this scenario uh, home office setup in such a way that you can prevent injuries and work more optimally and nicely okay. now uh, so this is a sneak peek of what we'll be seeing today. Like we'll see what is ergonomics, which I just told you. Why is ergonomics important for you? And uh, how can you work from home effectively? And the most common conditions affecting you, like um, symptoms of these conditions, what you can do for these conditions and some smart guidelines. So coming to this picture, I think many of us will relate with it. This is, uh, you know, a situation all of us are facing these days. Like um, just for the presentation's sake, we are working here. But the home uh, scenario also takes us on it, the laid back scenario. So um, coming to it, uh, what is ergonomics? Ergonomics is basically the science of fitting the job to the worker and fitting the worker to the job so that both of them, they work in sync together. Once you both are in sync, obviously your productivity is going to be the best. If you're comfortable, you love working with the company and give your best to the company. So what are the goals of ergonomic? To ensure that the posture of the worker is optimal, that requires least amount of muscle force and maximal blood flow. Decrease the risk of injury and illness. To enhance your productivity less absenteeism and boost in morale of the worker to improve the interaction between the machine and the world. What I actually told you now, once you're comfortable in your setup and you're working nicely, you won't be uh, encountering any kind of muscular disorders and that's going to enhance your productivity, less absenteeism if you don't have any pain or, uh, or much more uh, or you're comfortable in your setup. Obviously, you are not going to be distracted by any pain and that's going to um, be good for you. You'll work well. So why is ergonomics so important for software professionals or for like any professional who's, who has a sitting job? We all realize when we have a sitting job, we sitting for such long durations, we, we observe that after sitting, um, 
then for some time we might sit in an optimal position after that we switch over to awkward positions deviated positions like you know many of us slouch or bend like in this photo you can be seeing that that uh, lady is using a tab so she is um, you know sitting in a very awkward position she is slouching using a tab for a long time but that's eventually going to lead for lead to a neck pain back pain and wrist pain is you know going to limit the time she is going to spend on that tab and if she's working on that then i think it will really affect her productivity there and if you're in like prolonged positions we all know we all have uh, you know working hours long working hours especially in the work from home scenario there's no cut off you're working from uh, morning to night calls meetings everything there's just no cut off so a long amount of time if you are in awkward positions or you know not even awkward positions even in one of the best positions if you are sitting for a long amount of time you are actually going to get pain basic key here would be you know to keep changing your position or to keep change, take uh, you know take a break frequently repetitive movements when um, if you're working constantly you'd be typing moving your uh, you know um, moving your fingers over your keyboard or maneuvering your mouse that's going to be very much a thing for everyone who's working on a laptop those kind of repetitive movements which we don't really pay attention to when we don't have any pain we just keep on working but once you start getting that pain then we realize how much you know repetitive that movement uh, is happening and how much it is actually hurting you and excessive force many people um, do have a habit uh, it was found in a survey majority of us when we are working on a keyboard we are tapping the keys with so much of force that also affects your elbow joint and your finger joint if you decrease the amount of force that you are giving on your uh, you know with which you are using your mouse or holding your mouse and pressing the keyboard that will decrease the stress on your shoulder and your elbow itself so coming to this point we all know we heard this so much that uh, sitting is a new smoking i think most of you would have heard it somewhere like and people especially who uh, who are very much you no know, concerned about their health like what what are the hazards of sitting for a long time many of you would know they would have been experiencing first hand these conditions prolonged a prolonged inactivity it is considered as a fourth leading cause of death that's actually very alarming uh, symptom to most of us because we keep on working just you know in a run of the mill kind of a day we just think okay start of the day finish your job finish your you know course and start for the day start working we don't even you know we are so busy we don't really give it a thought how much sitting is affecting our health in the long run we might think okay i'm not eating anything bad or i am taking proper care of my uh, health but sitting in itself for such a long amount of time you know brings you to brings you to the verge of some really life threatening diseases which we get to know of at a very later stage so the less you sit during the day the better are your chances for living a healthy lifestyle so i know many of you here would be thinking ki oh my god my schedule is so tight so hectic and i really don't get any time what is this doctor talking about moving during the day am i work to just not seem to get over but here i am you know to tell you ways in which you can inculcate movement in your you know busy schedule without really wasting any time working along with movements and in ways i mean like in which you can incorporate movement and decrease the chances for uh, hazards of sitting for a long time so these are the effects which we see with sitting for a long time decreased muscle strength muscle wasting hip knee and back pain anxiety and depression heart disease varicose veins steep vein thrombosis decreased muscle strength we see when we are sitting for a long amount of time you're not really using most of our muscles 
muscles are not really being used yeah in fact you know getting stretched and elongated most of the time in sitting especially your uh, knee muscles your thigh muscles they are just you know plainly elongated no strength training for them no walking or any kind of activity that reduces a muscle strength majorly for your abdominals for your buttock muscles and especially your quadriceps and hamstring these are the main muscles which you would have heard they form the core of your body if they get weak your body strength decreases by a lot of extent muscle wasting which again is the same thing as muscle strength uh, decrease which happens because of lack of much activity hip knee and back pain when you're sitting for a long amount of time and your muscles are elongated and not getting any kind of movement or any relaxation in that same position the you know they start getting painful they need some kind of change in position and some kind of strengthening which um, it would come with activity like if you're moving or you know, climbing stairs or uh, just going for a walk the hip knee and back pain would also be visible quite soon for sitting after a long amount of time you would have seen suddenly after you know getting up um, after sitting for around 2 to 3 hours when you get up you realize oh my knee is aching my back is so sore heart disease and varicose veins this we would uh, you know get into uh, detail a little later in the pt So these are the conditions affecting the software professionals or any kind of professionals sitting for a long amount of time. Strained neck, text neck syndrome, upper back pain, low back pain, carpal tunnel syndrome, mouse elbow, cry eye syndrome, deep vein thrombosis, heart diseases, vitamin D deficiency, insomnia, stress and anxiety, obesity. Of this, vitamin D deficiency happens because Uh, about vitamin D, I would like to tell vitamin D is one vitamin which you would rarely, you know, get from food. It's most of the times present only in milk, but in a very small quantity, or in eggs. That to egg yolk, which most of us just throw away, thinking that it makes us fat, but it's not like that. Egg yolk is uh, not that bad for you. Egg yolk is actually one of the major, uh, you know, sources of vitamin D. and i think after covid vitamin d many people would have you know heard a lot about it or many people would have even taken vitamin d supplements to increase their immunity and make them more again more immune against covid it plays a big big role in your in boosting your immunity and you know it it keeps you away from uh, anxiety depression Vitamin D acts as a pro-hormone, preventing you from anxiety and depression and panic attacks, which is uh, quite prevalent in corporate world. So, vitamin D deficiency majorly happens also because we are staying indoors, not going out. Now, because of COVID, yes, many people do not go out because they think it's better to stay at home, wouldn't want to expose themselves going out. so and also when even before covid this was quite prevalent because you know you're so busy with your schedule all we think is to reach the office start with the work and nobody actually pays attention that you know in this we miss out our uh, you know daily uh, requirement for sunlight sunlight is a major source of vitamin d and vitamin d if it is deficient in your body it is going to lead to you know malabsorption or decreased absorption of calcium that i think many of you would understand is going to affect your bones and your muscles your brain everything calcium is a very important vitamin for you so for any kind of calcium to be absorbed in your body vitamin d is extremely important which you would get either from egg yolk milk or majorly from sunlight sunlight is a best source for vitamin d so these are the exercises for the next thing coming to next thing this is a very uh, you know one of the most major complaints coming in people with um, working on laptop or uh, for a long amount of time 
it happens majorly because of sustained posture we are constantly looking at the laptop in one posture even if it even if it is you know at your eye level if you're constantly looking or if if uh, you know it's below your eye level or sometimes people nowadays they do not have a proper work from home setup they are trying to you know make do of whatever they have at home so sometimes the chair is too low your table is too high and they're looking at the computer like this obviously it's going to hurt your neck so and if if you know if they do not have a table a proper table or maybe they are sitting on a sofa or you know on the bed or on a on a chair just just a chair they don't even have a desk sometimes so if your neck is constantly bent downwards it's going to hurt your neck or, and in that position if you're staying for a long amount of time it is going to eventually hurt the intervertebral discs in your vertebrae in the neck area that really gives you a lot of pain and tingling in the neck these exercises would help you with that kind of pain coming to neck pain i think you know many of you would have the same complaint as i am telling you so anyone would like to ask any questions on neck pain uh doctor uh yeah uh, anybody who has a question can raise your hand and i can move you to the panel so that you can talk to the doctor and ask please raise your hands okay doctor we are taking a question from anjani okay yeah yeah anjani you can ask a question anjani you can unmute yourself and ask a question okay we will take another question from hardeep kaur okay yeah. hardeep, uh, you can unmute yourself hardeep and ask a question good afternoon hardeep okay I think hardeep is also not available then we'll take the question from harish kumar harish kumar you can unmute yourself and ask the question you've raised your hand uh, hi hi ma'am hi so, hi good afternoon ma'am good afternoon ma'am uh, yes i'm facing back pain and uh, neck pain last uh, one year so due to the, that i have consulted the doctor and i have taken from the from uh, treatments from the ayurveda uh, that has been at almost uh, 15 days treatment are taken but still it is not work so still the back pain is uh, remain same back pain and the neck okay okay so um, i i would suggest uh, uh, how many pillows are you using what pillows sorry no can i pardon her doctor's voice harish uh, she is asking how many pillows do you use only one only one okay yeah. Yeah. that's a very high level pain i am facing actually Okay. Okay, Harish. What you can do for it, uh, you can apply alternately ice and hot pack together. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, like you know, uh, for the uh, ice pack, you apply it for ten minutes on your painful area, and after that, for ten minutes, you apply your hot pack. Okay. Repeat it twice, like in as in uh, ten minutes cold pack, ten minutes hot pack, ten minutes cold pack, and ten minutes hot pack. Followed by that, you do these stretches, and then again you apply cold pack. it will definitely work for you and uh, uh, i would tell you some stretches you okay. can take your head from here can you see me well yes ma'am the speech yeah. right you can uh, if you have pain on uh, on on the on this side you can keep your yeah. hands here give it a sustained stretch 
Okay. Like this, you're suddenly going to remove it. Okay. Also, additionally, um, I would suggest if you can visit a physiotherapist, I would suggest you to go for an ISTM treatment. That would uh, help you a lot to relieve, you know, your facial spasm. That does yes. that would mostly be there. So it's going to relieve it very quickly. Actually, I tried a physiotherapy as well, but it did not work. So have you tried ISTM? No. Yeah, try that. It is one of the most advanced techniques. I do use it a lot and uh, it works really well. I mean, like it would, you know, more than reduce your, uh, you know, it would reduce your treatment time to, uh, you know, even less than half. Uh -huh. Okay, which hospital it will give me? So, can you pardon this uh, name once again so that I can note it? ISTM. I A S T M. I A S T M. S T M. Instrument Assistance of Tissue Mobilization. Okay. Will you give this uh, material, man? Sorry? Will, will you share this material with this stretches? Uh, uh, Shiva, would you be sharing it? Okay, I'll, I'll share I'll share with Shiva. He would share with you. Sure. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Hope it helped. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, coming to the next slide, these would be some. Uh, a moment. Yeah. Okay. You'll move ahead now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. We can um, we can move ahead with the presentation. We'll take the questions toward the end, uh, towards the Q and A session. Would that be okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So coming to the next condition, one of the most prominent conditions after neck pain is back pain. As Harish uh, also had told, he also had uh, back pain. One of the most prevalent conditions, not, not just in software professionals, but most of us. So that is uh, back pain. These would be some exercises that would help you to prevent back pain as well as treat them when it's in a milder stage. Why does back pain, you know, is um, why is it more common in people who are sitting for a long amount of time? We would think, why not, you know, people uh, who are more active, why more, more in us? So when you're sitting for a long amount of time, our abdominals, they tend to get quite weak because of, you know, lack of much use. And your back muscles constantly when you're sitting in a wrong posture or deviated posture, it tends to get very stiff. And the back muscles are constantly working to make you, you know, balanced in that posture. And when they get stiff, a lot of metabolites accumulate there. These metabolites are nothing but chemicals which um, accumulate when any kind of muscle is contracting or working. So when you're not moving, the blood flow to that, to that area is very restricted. It's like minimal just to maintain the flow. So if there is not much blood flow through that area, the metabolites are not going to get washed off from there. And these metabolites, these are pain-causing chemicals. So when your abdominal muscles are not, not counteracting your back muscles, all the load is on the back muscles and that results in your back pain. So these exercises, give some amount of movement to your back muscles, some kind of activity to your abdominals, also your uh, uh, oblique, your, uh, your muscles on the side of your trunk. So uh, this lead to you know increased blood flow through that area and they lead to wash out the metabolites and decrease the back pain. So these stretches would really help you to maintain a range of motion for your back and also prevent any kind of pain. Uh, 
I know many people in um, uh, working on laptops would have had a very similar complaint to that, in which they have complaints of numbness in hands, in fingers. Often they would uh, complain of their uh, their palm going very numb suddenly, or sometimes the tingling is so much that it becomes unbearable, especially at night, and they do not know. Do not know what to do actually for it or what is the cause behind it. Sometimes they think maybe you know I kept my hand in a wrong position that that's causing the pain, but actually it's a laptop that's causing the pain. Many of you would have you know uh, googled this carpal tunnel syndrome and uh, medial epicondylitis or uh, uh, mouse elbow or lateral epicondylitis. Sometimes people even call it tennis elbow. All of these conditions are majorly, you know, pointing towards the same thing. Most of the symptoms are quite similar, like in a mouse elbow. Just beside your elbow, if you would have hit your elbow to any car, any door, or you know, a wall while walking, suddenly you get a a very um, a huge amount of tingling in your hand. You even call it a funny bone. So your alarm now passes from there, and when when it gets compressed, when you're keeping your hand on the uh, on your armrest for a long amount of time, and it's pressing on your alarm now, it is going to give you these symptoms, wherein um, you will see tingling in your elbow, tingling in your forearm, in your fingers. That is for lateral epicondylitis or mouse elbow, and in carpal tunnel syndrome, as you can see here, to our hand here. As you can see in the picture here, this is a car. This is a transverse carpal ligament. This is uh, this wrist is also called carpus. These bones, these bones. There is a ligament here, which is known as transverse carpal ligament, and a nerve that passes from here. When you're keeping your hand on the wrist pad, or you know, if you're working with too much pressure on the mouse, and your hand is like, um, like this most of the times. So this nerve here. Here it it gets compressed, and when it keeps on getting compressed for a long amount of time, it leads to inflammation, swelling inside that tunnel. It leads to compression of the medial nerve. Med any kind of nerve when they get involved or or they are compressed, like an electric wire, they will give you tingling, or sometimes you know very vague, dull, aching pain. So when your medial nerve here gets you know compressed. It gives you pain in the first three fingers and numbness, as it is shown here in blue in your thumb, index finger, middle finger, and three fourth of the ring finger, because these are the muscles and the fingers which are supplied by the medial nerve. Here you get pain and numbness. So these are the exercises given beside other exercises which will help you for carpal tunnel syndrome. Also, you can apply an ice pack over here. That will reduce the inflammation, which has come, and it definitely works wonders in reducing the symptoms here. It might sound quite simple, like what will a uh, basic ice pack do? But when you know, actually, the problem here, at least in initial stages, is not much. Only in later stages, it gets really worse. Initial stages, if you if you do these kind of uh, You know, um, basic treatments that also helps you a long way in this. If you just apply ice pack in that and uh, do these stretches, it releases your pain instantly. And only a you know small thoughtful thing that try and keep your wrist neutral when you're working on a mouse so that your nerve is not getting compressed. That goes a long way in preventing this. This is a mouse elbow which I was just telling you about. Uh, the funny bone when when it is uh, compressing against the desk or uh, some uh, what we uh, we are uh, bending too much on your elbow it it leads to the compression of the ulnar nerve which leads to pain throughout this whole extent from the side of the elbow towards the forearm and in your fingers sometimes when you, when we are holding the mouse too tightly that also is exerting a pressure on your elbow because the muscles with which you are clenching the mouse or gripping the mouse is also you know they start from your elbow so all throughout your muscle gets inflamed it gets swollen and it manifests over here at your elbow so here you can see 
you're giving too much of a pressure on the wrist and you're clinch, clinching the mouse so tightly. Here I've also shown for your reference how you should not hold your mouse and how you should hold it so that your shoulder is not internally rotated and your pressure is not on your elbow, how you should keep your arm neutral. These are some of the exercises for mouse elbow, some simple stretches, forearm stretches with stretches of muscles going throughout the arm, which go and attach to the elbow. This is an elbow pad, ice pack, and some simple gripping exercises, which help you strengthen the forearm muscles and decrease the pain at your elbow. These are some of the finger exercises. These can be done both for medial epicondylitis, that is golfer's elbow, and for carpal tunnel syndrome because fingers are involved in both of them. Now coming to our next complaint, knee pain is also one of the most major complaints that we see. Um, if you're sitting for a long amount of time, suddenly we get up and realize my knees are you know, giving way. I'm not able to balance. I'm not able to stand or too much of pain in my knee. That is because when you're sitting, your, your thigh muscles, that is a quadriceps, is constantly in a stretched position. Hamstring muscle is constantly in a contracted position, which is behind your thigh. So, uh, it's, it's not getting, you know, any time to lengthen itself. So it con constantly it's pulling on your knee towards, you know, in a downward direction, in a backward direction. And your, and your muscle on the upper side of your thigh, it is not able to um, counteract it. That is actually resulting in your knee pain. So with these kind of exercises, you will relax. You will contract the front, uh, the muscles on the front of the thigh and relax the muscles on the back of the thigh and which will in turn balance it out and reduce your knee pain. Most of us would be doing these squats is a very common exercise. And this, I think, you know, out of, you know, uh, our own instinct, we kind of do these exercises, hamstring stretch, split squats. They work very well with knee pain. So coming to deep pain thrombosis, this was one of the effects I told you uh, I would discuss later. So deep pain thrombosis is uh, uh, one of the major reasons people die because of sitting. When we are sitting for a long amount of time, all our blood, it pulls in your leg. Half is known as, you know, peripheral pump. When you are standing or sitting for a long amount of time, if your calf muscles are not working or if you're not moving your leg, your calf muscle is not acting. All the muscles uh, here in the lower leg are relaxed. So now all the blood which is moving through your body is getting pulled here. And it is not going back to the heart. It is pressurizing your heart also because it's not getting the blood to pump it throughout the body. And all the blood which is getting pulled in the thigh, it is affecting your arteries in the legs. Because they are also getting distended with blood. They are also facing an overload of blood which they are not used to. It causes swelling in your feet. Pain in your feet. You would have, you would have felt tingling or you know, feet is suddenly numb and too painful. So over a period of time, when the blood is constantly accumulating here, it leads to formation of clots in your arteries, in your veins. So the formation of clots is known as deep vein thrombosis, which happens mostly in veins. If these clots are, you know, uh, quite common in older people, but in younger generation, they can be seen now because of uh, sitting for a long amount of time. When these clots are in one position, okay, fine, they're not really going to give you much trouble. But if they dislodge from here and they move through your bloodstream, if at any point of any where, if they get stuck or if they get stuck in your heart or your brain, it can be extremely dangerous and it can be fatal. It can lead to a heart attack or a stroke. So this this um, you know side effect or workplace as art that we see, deep pain thrombosis is extremely dangerous for anyone. That's why sitting is uh, 
this case, one of the most common uh, causes of fatalities nowadays. Coming again to a very um, common thing which we all face after looking at a laptop or a phone or any kind of visual media device for a long time, dry eye syndrome or, uh, you know, suddenly we feel a lot of dryness in our eyes or pain in our eyes or uh, when our eyes are so fatigued that when you look into light or when you're uh, looking into the laptop, it starts paining or overwatering. Sometimes people, their eyes become so dry that they are constantly, you know, rubbing it. That in itself harms also more. So the major causes for computer vision syndrome are when your eyes are not rested or if you're working in a poorly lit area or the pixelation of your device is not proper or if, you know, sometimes when the network is not proper, your screen is flickering. And glare, here I would like to mention glare is one of the major reasons you get a headache after uh, working on a laptop for a long amount of time. So try and uh, keep your source of light towards your side, not in your front or your back, towards your side. So your room is well, well illuminated and it's not putting a glare on the laptop as well as on your eyes. So the source of lighting where it is in regard to your computer is also very important. So a remedy for these problems is given here itself. What you should do is rest your eyes properly using backlit screens or you can use night mode for your uh, phones or decrease the brightness and reduction in pixelations. Anti-glare glasses also you can use or uh, you can use um, some uh, moisture drops or uh, you know eye drops like refreshed tears or uh, something, uh, some drops to um, Moisten your eyes. Here are some uh, exercises for your eyes. Constant blinking. Moving your eyeballs in different directions. Also, there is a specific rule for eyes, which is known as a 20-20-20 rule. A long time back, doctors had formulated this rule because when you're watching your laptop, what happens, your eyes get accustomed to it. And after a point, it, it starts getting really painful and your eye muscles, they get really fatigued. So, prevent, so to prevent that fatigue, what you should do after every 20 minutes, you should focus at any object, which is at least... 20 uh, you know meters away for 20 seconds and then again you can look back to your computer what it does is you know it causes accommodation in your eyes your eye muscles they work the muscles which are working for a long amount of time also get a break and it prevents fatigue so your eyes won't get tired very easily and also it will improve your vision it will help you in uh, preventing eye fatigue coming to this posture might be a very common term you all would have heard nothing new here posture is any pattern in which an individual sits stands walks or even sleep it's one of the most basic things on which you know all of your uh, body's health depends so if you uh, you know want to avoid any kind of disorder having a good posture is like you know the basic of it so any any posture which is you know uh, if you want to define a good posture it would be anywhere where your spine is erect your neck is level your knee are level and your ankle is firmly on the ground neither on either side it's set, it's in center like if you imagine if a line or if if you drop a thread from behind your head it would fall exactly from your spine just in between both the knees and in between your ankles here I've shared some of the examples of poor posture. Forward head, one of the most common postures we all have these days. And sway back here. That's also very common in people sitting for a long amount of time because of weak abdominal muscle. We all have what we think is like, you know, uh, we have a protruding belly. Actually, the cause is here. 
when you have a sway back, you think that you're getting fat. Definitely, you might be getting fat because of sitting for a long amount of time. But uh, sway with sway back, also, you know, your belly uh, tends to protrude. That I think, you know, many of us, uh, when I am telling it, would also know that uh, actually, you know, the problem is more in your pelvis, in your hip bone. If you will try to balance it out and do exercises for that, it's actually going to straighten it a lot. And you'll think, and you'll instantly feel you got there a few inches, maybe instantly. So this is the right way to sleep. Always, I would suggest use the minimum amount of pillows. If you're not if you are comfortable without a pillow, try to use, try to sleep without a pillow. Just keep one, you know, a small towel rolled below, below your neck. That should just support your curve of the spine. Turn in the neck. That's it. That's the only thing that's needed for your neck. And always keep a, a pillow below your knee. That will relax your lumbar spine. The spine here in your back. So all your body is relaxed and you will sleep properly and all your muscles will be relaxed. So coming to the main point, working from home, that which we all are facing these days. I mean, uh, these are one of the, some, some of the pointers that we'll be seeing here. But uh, these are the major points which we have to uh, take note of. Like your arms should always be supported. You have to watch your head. It should be level on your neck. Avoid, uh, avoid slouching on your chair. The screen should always be at the level of your eye. And most of the calls, we would suggest uh, you do not use a phone. Either use a hands-free device like uh, earphones or uh, headphone. And, uh, or maybe you can take your call on a speaker. That uh, you know prevents you from unnecessary work, holding a call on for a long amount of time. That also helps you a lot. And also you can type or you know maybe multitask and do many other things together. Here, next one is uh, how to avoid eye fatigue, which I told you, the exercises for eye and taking frequent breaks, the 20-20-20 rule. And walk the talk. Like, if you have, if you are on a call, that at least, you know, you can use that time to walk. If not any other time, at least you can inculcate and put some kind of activity in your routine and take a call alongside. So come, when it started coming to home, we all, you know, found our cozy spots, maybe sitting on a sofa or uh, uh, sitting in the bedroom and working as to our comforts. For some days, it would have been fine, definitely working from the comfort of our home. We will work from wherever we will want and uh, no proper uh, restriction, okay, to work from here. But uh, after a few days, we all would have realized it goes a long way and you can't really work like that. You need to have a proper setup. I have tried to uh, put it uh, across for you, just, uh, you know, uh, some photos on uh, how we can, you know, make some uh, makeshift arrangements at our home and uh, make our work from home more uh, feasible, easier, this is my own house and uh, these are some, some of the formulations I uh, made for my husband when he started working from home. So this is a way I, I uh, tried making a, uh, a standing table by keeping a laptop table on the dining table and here he is working on the laptop. While sitting on a chair, I tried giving one pillow to support his lumbar spine to help his lumbar curve and uh, prevent backache. While sitting on the sofa, his back is always supported. And if your feet are dangling in ground or if they are not at a proper angle, you can always use a stool. The laptop is also uh, supported with a pillow. And uh, if your feet are firmly placed 
uh, if your feet are not on the ground or on the sofa, your back should be firmly supported, your elbow at 90 degree and your wrist in neutral. Or if you're sitting on the floor for a chain, different kind of positions, your back is always supported. You have to have a lumbar support to prevent backache and support your lumbar spine. And I tried to give the laptop a raise by keeping a pillow. These are some of the exercises which you can do sitting at your table. You don't even need to get up. So no excuses here that I cannot get up from my table. I have no time for my exercise. You can at least take two minutes from your routine and do these break exercises. Just some simple stretches and you won't even have to leave your room. Or maybe, you know, these, these can be done while uh, you're on the call and uh, you're on speakerphone and doing these stretches and talking on the phone as well. Multitasking as it's rest. This one, uh, I found it quite useful. People who prefer, uh, are more into yoga and all, but are not getting any time for it. These are some of the few, few stretches which which will, uh, which are very similar to your yoga posture or Surya Namaskar posture, and you can do them sitting on the chair itself. Some more exercises which you can uh, inculcate in your routine. You don't even need to go out. Just give them around uh, 10 to 15 minutes of your day and you can do these stretches. They would involve every form of exercise, every form of stretch that you can give to your body. Very simple exercises, but they are exercising all the parts of your body, and it safeguards you from most of the any kind of you know musculoskeletal disorders that might be uh, coming in your way. So coming to the next thing here, five five rule for your mind and body. So. This is one rule. In in any hour, in an hour that you're working, it should be like five minutes you work and five minutes you take out for your mind and body. Go take a stroll or maybe get a bottle of water or uh, get yourself a coffee or maybe you know just walk and go to your balcony, just have a look. Give you know, give your eyes a break, give your mind a break, look at something different. That five minutes also would work a lot to, you know, give, give your mind a break, give your muscles a break, your eyes, and it will also maintain flexibility in your body. When, you, when you're when you moving, you know, there's a blood rush through your body and all the, you know, sitting for a long amount of those metabolites which accumulate all in your body, the blood flow, it washes it all away and you're filled with energy again. All your muscles are rejuvenated again. This five minutes also, if you take it out for yourself, it goes a long way. These are some uh, tips to uh, maintain a healthy lifestyle while staying at home. Stay hydrated. One of the key factors for any kind of, you know, healthy being, we all listen to it so many times, stay hydrated, yes. If you drink adequate amount of water, your it, it, it really goes a long way. It keeps your eyes moist. It keeps your mind more alert. Your more, uh, you know, affects your mood, affects your alertness. And moreover, all of your metabolism, most of it depends, depends on water. If you're well hydrated, most of it is going to work well. Take family meals, schedule a timetable for yourself. Even if you're working from home, your lunch and evening and dinner breaks should always be set. You always feel hungry at the time, you know, your meals were uh, scheduled. Like now also when you're working from home, you would be at one o'clock. Definitely you would be feeling hungry and uh, 
if you are going through the timetable, definitely every other thing is going to fall in place. Just go by those timetables. At least snacking, when at home we think, I mean, like you just go out and um, munch any kind of thing that is there at home. Because you're not even moving around, too much of snacking is going to lead to weight gain of, uh, you know, which is again going to be a problem. So healthy snacking, these days, most of us after COVID have become so much, you know, pro-health and, uh, you know, mindful of health. Always, you know, we should very much be mindful of what we eat because little goes of uh, little goes a long way. If you're really uh, watching your weight and your habits, it's, it's going to help you a lot. Skin screens during your bedtime, meditate during this time, reflect throughout how was your day, how can you make it better. Staying at home, these can be some of the saviors which are going to uh, make your time a little better. Take a break, be with your kids. Exercise. Again, I've been stressing throughout through this whole session. Exercise is the only way, works a long way. Not because I'm a physiotherapist, I'm suggesting it. Yes, exercise goes a long way in every function of your body, be it metabolism, be it weight loss, or be it any, any function of any kind of organ that is in your body. Exercise helps it function a lot better and if you're not exercising take it in writing to me you are actually you know uh, taking a step towards you know you are more prone to diseases if you're not exercising or not involving yourself in any kind of physical activity that's a must eat right eat well balanced meals which would be a right mix of vitamins fibers carbohydrates protein, fat, everything. It should involve everything, but in right quantity, nothing in excess. Sleep well. If not sleeping well, definitely. Sleep is a key to wake up with a fresh mind on the next day. So if you have to work well the other day, yes, sleep is a key. Here I uh, have shared some of the dietary uh, requirements which we see vitamin d foods egg yolk peas mayonnaise curd protein foods yes uh, protein actually are the building blocks of our body so any kind of uh, repair work that is going on in our body or uh, uh, for any kind of function that's happening in our body proteins are a must so proteins should be included in every meal of yours be it in your dal or any kind of meat that you're eating it has to be a part of every meal of yours. Fruits and vegetables. All of these uh, fruits and vegetables they provide you with a lot, a lot of vitamins. It's not like you know proteins or carbs or these things. When we think of diet, we think of we think of only these things. But no, vitamins are also most important in maintaining the functions of your skin, eyes, and most of your organs. And we have to decrease the intake of junk food fried food, caffeine, and sugar. Sugar is actually a slow poison. Here I would like to also mention, well, if you're consuming fruits, I would suggest you eat them rather than juicing them on. That also increases your insulin resistance. So taking fruits just like the way they are, that's better. I know it would take a little longer time to cut them rather than just juicing them. But when you're drinking a juice, what happens? The juice is directly going to your body, going in your body in one shot. And your body is, you know, um, it's not utilizing it instantly. When it's not getting utilized instantly, it's going to lead to its deposition in the form of fat. And if you're eating it, uh, like um, if, you're not, if you're eating it in a cut form, your body will take time to digest it. Your insulin spike will be lower and it is not going to directly convert into fat. So that is going to help you. Better take your fruits in cut form, not in juice form. Last but not the least, these are some smart guidelines. You have to stretch daily, include movements in your life, add variety to your life. Variety is the spice of life. Rest and reduce stress. Stress actually is... Any kind of disease that you would learn about 
the first cause they ever mention is stress. So I think that stresses a lot upon stress. Last but not least, talk to us. You can always contact us through Gmail. I'm also on LinkedIn. So if you have any queries or would like to contact us, you can contact me through, through Gmail or uh, on LinkedIn. Here I would like to end my session. And uh, I have made a small video for you guys. Let's see if we can play it. I think it's not there. Okay, Shiva, I'm um, just a minute. Are you playing the video, uh, Dr. Yeah, 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 I'm playing. I'm trying to play that. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Rithi. I'm a physiotherapist and an ergonomist. In this video, I'll be showing you some cool desk exercises which you can do. Doctor, Sorry to uh, pause here. Yeah. yeah, now we, yeah, now the video is available. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Rithi. I am a physiotherapist and an ergonomist. In this video, I will be showing you some cool desk exercises which you can do very easily without even having to get up. So no excuses, start doing. So let us begin. Thank you so much, Dr. Riddhi. Uh, thank you so much for uh, the beautiful presentation and also the video. Uh, just realized uh, myself that uh, most of the postures that I use in a day uh, fall under uh, poor postures. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of work uh, that has to be done. And I'm sure a lot of people will agree, uh, agree with me in terms of uh, their sitting postures and, and all that. So now, uh, before we move on to the Q&A session, I wanted to just uh, put a poll here to collect some feedback regarding the session. And I would request everyone, please, to uh, give us your valuable feedback and then post this. It will take a minute or so. And then we will move on to the Q&A session where you can ask doctors uh, your personal questions and uh, we will we also have some uh, questions in the q a box so we will try and answer all of them okay yeah i've uh, launched the poll please uh, please request everyone to uh, give you valuable feedback here
we have only 50% uh, of the people participating in the poll so far please request everyone to take a second take a minute and uh, please give us your valuable feedback it does help us uh, get us better and also plan events uh, that you want to hear from us If seventy five percent participation, another twenty five percent, please. request everyone to give us your valuable feedback and then we can move on to the uh, q and a session okay we'll end the poll at 432 it's 431 now another minute we'll end the poll at 432 and we'll open the stage for q and a ending the poll now okay uh doctor we'll open the stage for q and a there are about 11 questions in the q and a box if you can see them yeah yeah if you can just uh, take a moment to address all of these and then uh, we can have uh, people move on to the panel and ask your questions directly yeah okay the first question is sleeping on a floor or on a mattress which one is more beneficial the uh, i would uh, contrary to a belief while most of the people they think sleeping on a floor is more beneficial i do not agree with that because that does not support the curves of your spine it flattens your spine you have to support the curves of your spine so i would always suggest sleeping on a mattress but your mattress should be good If the mattress is not proper, then my suggestion is going to go wrong. You should have a proper mattress that would su- that would support your neck neck curve and your back curve. And if you think it is not supporting it properly, you keep a towel roll below your neck, and also you keep a pillow below your knee and flatten your lumbar spine. That is going to help you. I'll go with the next question. Yoga versus physiotherapy. Um, you know, both are totally different things. Yoga is something else. Physiotherapy is uh, a treatment uh, therapy. It is done uh, mostly when uh, you have a musculoskeletal disorder, or sometimes to prevent it. Also, like I use it in ergonomics. Yoga is uh, something to um, yoga is to maintain your body's flexibility. and if you in proper form yoga is kind of you know a maintenance thing yeah i know yoga is used for treatment also and would benefit you a lot in conditions wherein it gives you various stretches but these two things can never be com- you know compared physiotherapy is an entirely different thing uh doctor so before i won't take it versus i would take yoga and physiotherapy together i would never choose between them okay Uh, doctor before we move on you can stop presenting your screen so that we can uh, see on full screen yeah great yeah we have you on the full screen now okay. 
Doctor, you can take the next question from the Q&A. Yeah, okay. Doctor, mechanical office chair versus yoga ball versus sitting on the floor. Definitely an office chair. You cannot sit on the yoga ball or sitting on the floor for a long amount of time. That are only for a very short span of time. When you are sitting on a yoga ball, your your back and um, you know constantly you will be working um, to balance yourself. Your back and uh, abdominal muscles will be constantly working. Yes, it's a good thing to sit on that, but you cannot sit on that for a long amount of time. Your back is not supported. Your lumbar spine is not supported. Also, your balance is compromised. You cannot sit on that for a long amount of time. You can sit on that for some amount of time. Sitting on the floor, no. I mean, like only for a small amount of time. For a change of positions, when you want to give your legs a stretch, they are constantly folded when sitting on a chair. Yes, for some amount of time. But if you are sitting constantly throughout the day, definitely only one option: office chair. And set it according to your uh, height and your desk. Your feet should be firmly planted on the ground. Your knees should be at ninety degrees. And your hips should be at ninety degree to one twenty degree. That would be an ideal setup. I'll move to the next question. Yes, doctor. Yeah. Are blue light glasses worth it? By what I mean, does it really work? Yes, it does work. It produces a glare to quite an extent. You can uh, instead of buying it, uh, what you can do, you can uh, even decrease the brightness of your laptop. That would also help. A uh, more convenient option, if that uh, if that is something you are looking forward to. But yes, blue light glasses are also worth it. They do help a lot. I myself use anti glare glasses, and yes, they help us a lot. Source of light should be from side view, not from front to back side. Right to avoid computer vision syndrome. Yes, definitely. Should I type the answer here, Shiva? Uh, no, doctor. I think we are doing it live, so I think they'll be able to hear it. Yeah. Okay. Source of light should always, always be from the side. If it will come from behind, your laptop screen is going to shine and it's going to pick your eyes. And if it's from your side, like the light is going to fall directly into your eyes and you will not be able to concentrate on the laptop you will feel your laptop is dark laptop your light should always be from the side so your room is well lit your laptop is well lit and it's not glaring into your eyes uh doctor we'll take one question from the live audience uh, we i see a hand raised for a really long time i want yeah, to invite uh, ms roop uh, sorry rupa to unmute yourself and ask the question to doctor directly yeah. uh, uh thank you so much no uh, uh, yeah i have few questions i usually walk i am uh, my background is i sit in a, uh, sit in one place and work for long time and of course i take frequent uh, breaks i go for walking in the morning for uh, 45 to 1 hour i don't do any exercise as of now and as you rightly said um, i can see from nowadays only from 2 3 days there is a lump on my feet i don't know what is that is because of me sitting into a continuously one place i am not sure and apart from that also i sit i almost maintain the posture but still i get sometimes when i'm stressed or i'm not sure what is the reason i get pain on my um, uh, sorry in my leg in my eyes there's a lot of pain comes to my eyes and later on i get a headache Uh, you know is is that because of my bad posture or uh, stress or continuously seeing this laptop or i don't know what exactly the reason okay see regarding the eyes yes definitely to a large extent it would be because of the laptop okay after staring for a long amount of time in your laptop your eyes will become dry we are blinking less unconsciously uh-huh. we don't even blink more when we are staring at a laptop we are constantly staring when we blink our eyes you know they have a, a fluid shutter when you blink your eyes your eyes get moistened so when you're not blinking constantly staring your eyes will become dry improve your hydration okay and uh, for some time you know you can try drops like some refreshed tears or something some artificial tear drops to keep your eyes moist and okay. you can practice a 20 20 20 rule 
which I told you. So huh. you can stare at any object which is around twenty meters far away for around twenty seconds, and then again back to your laptop. You can do the exercises. They will relax your eye muscles. So when your okay. fatigue is less, you know, and your eyes are well moisturized, your eye pain and dryness is definitely going to go away for sure. Mm-hmm. And okay. uh, regarding the swelling in the feet that you were telling, it's in the feet or in the leg. Uh, in the feet only, uh, where we have um, uh, the knee bone, no, below that, the knee mm-hmm. joint below knee that. Okay. Uh, okay. Only from from only from uh, you know two three days, I am able to notice that there is a swelling. Knee joint below behind yeah. the knee joint. Yes. Yes. Very less. Very. I mean, if you suddenly see, you won't be able to notice it. Uh, it is a very light uh, swelling. Okay. So, did you uh, um, uh, while walking? Did you just a minute? Sure. Yeah. While walking, uh, did you uh, twist suddenly, or there was any snapping sound, or any kneeling? Oh uh, no! I go for a clear walk. Um, the road is very good. Okay. Then I would suggest uh, you lie down with your legs raised for some time. Okay. Maybe okay. there's some edema. So uh-huh. that will uh, that will drain on its own. Okay. Uh, okay. Continue your walking. It's uh, it's not related to that. Continue your walking. Good mm-hmm. listen that you're incorporating physical fitness there. <laughs> but not exercising. That's uh, also after this session. I'm a little bit worried. <laughs> well, no, why worried? You should be happy. You got such a good insight and guidance. Now you should just follow it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I will do that. If yeah, I would, you know, get guidance. I would be happy. Good, you shown me the way. Now it's just up to me to do it. No, no, that is true. Actually, when the session start, half of the session was there. While sitting only, I started exercising. <laughs> oh, that's so good! You know, I'm so happy to hear that. This is worth actually. This session is really it will help us all. You know, very much. Great, great. I'm and so I good missed good. out few sessions in the beginning. I joined when the neck exercise was there. The prior to that, I missed out. Is there any chance that I get this? Um, you know, PPT or any way. Yeah, yeah, def- definitely, sure. Rupa. We will uh, yeah. share the recording of the session. Uh, Wonderful. Be available on our YouTube channel very soon. We will inform okay. you. I will personally inform you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. This is being wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you. I I hope I was of help to you. <laughs> Sorry, you were. I I hope I could help you. Uh, definitely. No. No. This whatever the inputs you have given me, it will definitely help me. Great, great. Thank you. Take sure. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Doctor, we'll take the next question from Mr. Soham. Uh, Soham, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah. Hello, doctor. Uh, so, doctor, Hello. basically, yeah. Uh, I just need to ask you, like, uh, so uh, when we do uh, exercise, right? So, do we have any like benchmarks or something like that, like? Okay, we should uh, at least walk for six thousand steps or ten thousand steps. No, never. It is always individual. You should always uh, walk as much as your body allows you. And I would suggest when you're going for a walk, give five minutes for a warm up. Then you start with brisk pace. Brisk pace, and uh, after that, when you're ending your walk, cool down for a little bit, five minutes or so, and walk only as much as your body allows you. Then slowly you can increase. Okay, and it's always what, very individualistic, and I would always suggest you never force yourself with exercise because if you will force yourself on the first day, second day, it's only going to be difficult for you, and you're not going to like it. Okay, yeah, thanks. And doctor, one more, the so second question I have, like, uh, so if you like, I'm planning to, you know, uh, renovate my. Uh, Next room uh, with the study table. I already have study table. So generally, what height we should keep uh, for the study table? Because uh, you know, all ergonomics chairs have different different settings. So to have that knee parallel uh, with the leg uh, uh, hand rest. So how much I recommend? I will recommend the height of the study table. Should. See, I would suggest. Uh, see, it is a little individualistic. and uh, you should be able to keep your laptop on your eye level if you keep your laptop on the table it should be at your level of the eye okay that, that should be the height and also your uh, hip and knee 
should be you know getting through the table very comfortably it should not be cramped okay yeah thanks just you know keep these two things in mind and then finalize the height see if you are a short person i cannot tell you if you know if i'll tell you uh, you know uh, if if it will be higher for you it's not going to help you so okay. your your uh, thighs and knee should fit in comfortably and when you keep your laptop yeah. on the table it should be at your eye level that would be an optimum height for you okay thank you thank you so much uh, i could help you this is sure it helps me a lot and uh, one more thing shiva please circle this slide it's very important for us sure sure so i will definitely do that yeah do we have anyone else who wants to ask a question to the doctor or we'll answer some questions from the q and a box and then we'll end the session uh, in another 15 minutes uh, please raise your hands if you want to ask a question directly to the doctor uh, or uh, doctor we can continue answering questions from the q and a box okay so next question is having sar food is back for back pain no it's a myth it is not at all related so any exercise and tips to function the brain beneficially <laughs> so first and foremost i would tell you sleep well if you're not sleeping well it's going to hamper it try to meditate try to do some exercise to improve your focus on something and plan your day it's really going to help you if your if your you know day is sorted in your mind it's going to go well you know what to do and how to go about the day so that's it so we'll go to the next question is physiotherapy useful for muscular dystrophy yes in fact physiotherapy is the main line treatment for muscular dystrophy it is extremely helpful for that next question is from amulya sitting on the sofa and using a table mat is it okay if your back is supported and your feet are firmly on the ground and if you are raising your laptop to your eye level yes it's okay but change your position very frequently because the sofa is a little soft so it's not going to offer you much support so yes keep taking frequent breaks it should help you if you don't have any other option of a table and a chair it's fine you can use it but take frequent breaks and uh, maintain these key points foot fixed back supported and laptop at your eye level and back not slouched back straight back supported do we have any better exercises to get relief from arthritis yes definitely arthritis patients they you know majority of the patients coming from coming for physiotherapy are from arthritis for arthritis we basically give range of motion exercises flexibility and strengthening exercises they help them a lot there are many patients especially knee osteoarthritis patients who have avoided surgery with physiotherapy so you can understand how well physiotherapy works for arthritis and arthritis patients usually have a lot of pain in morning especially that's a diagnostic feature for arthritis pain especially in morning so while you're in bed if you do range of motion exercises all the movements for all the joints it's going to be you know immensely beneficial for you and your day will be much better and much less painful than other days if you go for strengthening exercises it's going to make your muscles strong which are going to support your joint and when the joints are well supported they're not going to rub against each other and arthritic pain usually comes from when you know two bone joints uh, they rub against each other if you are strengthening your muscles your bones will not rub against each other so much and your pain would be much much lesser 
coming to the next question sitting on the sofa and using a table mat i guess i took it yeah yes, doctor i think we have answered this question already yeah any suggestion or remedies for insomnia uh, a little off the topic for me but i can give you only one remedy for it make a time table and tire yourself with exercise again getting exercise there maybe that should help you <laughs> is it okay to use a plastic chair for sitting with any cushion like with any cushion like office chair yes definitely if your back is supported and feet are on the floor definitely you can sit on a plastic chair i do yoga on a regular basis for my back pain but still i am getting difficulty while standing walking for at least 10 hours i i i think you should uh, just have a look on the exercises which i have given for back pain they'll help you a lot uh, this is from banishika i hope she is there this question is uh, any tips for people who have uh, recovered from covid doctor we have uh... uh i think samantha in the audience list and uh, i uh, yeah. samantha you can unmute yourself and you can talk to the doctor if you want to regarding the question Samantha are you there can you hear us yeah i can yes uh, am i audible yes yes you are please go ahead and ask your question so is there any specific uh, like uh, yoga postures i should follow or i should not overdo that or anything like i should uh, consult to an doctor for that so my um samantha i would uh, like to ask you uh, since when do you have this back pain and how did it start uh, i started from a year ago i guess so i have started to follow some uh, regular basis of yoga like normal which i my body can permit so okay and how did this back pain start uh, i think uh, by sitting posture only i'm not sure but and uh, also while traveling uh for the office it started a long back but i was ignoring that but uh, last year on our city is uh, getting more uh, when i am unable to work for more than an hour okay okay so i would like to uh, tell you if it's not because of any injury or something uh, um so, i would suggest you do core exercises okay i've, I've uh, shown now uh, this basic stretches i've shown here you can google out for core exercises that would really help you i would tell you the names for those exercises you can specifically look out for them one would be bridging cat and camel exercise okay bridging exercise and um, abdominal setting exercise or uh, static uh, static abs you you might get it by the name static abdominals also okay okay thank okay. you these exercises and straight leg raising these four exercises would help you a lot please uh, try to get these exercises and uh, start doing them and in addition to the general flexibility exercises which i have shown shown to you but do only as much as you can do do not overstress okay thank you Thank you very much. So, uh, next question is: Any tips for people who have recovered from COVID? For COVID, I would uh, because of COVID, many people have experienced breathing difficulties, and uh, I would, uh, if uh, you know, um, 
I don't know if I should be sharing this. When I got COVID, uh, we used to do breathing exercises a lot. I concentrated a lot on my diet. When I got COVID, I concentrated more on liquid diet. And uh, that helps your metabolism a lot and helps you get through well sooner. And after, after you recover from COVID, continue with breathing exercises. Try to include protein in your diet and start with exercises very gradually because you will feel quite weak. So try to do just basic exercises. Walk only as much as you can. Don't overstress yourself. Slowly you will get better. Slowly your strength will come back. Exercise only as much as you can. Slow walking, general flexibility exercises, usual exercises which you would have done in your school, normal PT exercises. But yes, breathing exercises, I would suggest that you should do regularly because of COVID, many people, you know, complained of their um, lungs being affected a lot. You can check out that video on my YouTube channel at Space Physioka. I have a special video dedicated to breathing exercises. Please uh, do have a look. It helps a lot. Uh, doctor, we have last three questions to answer. I think we have about four minutes uh, left uh, for the session. Yeah. We'll try and answer uh, them and yeah. we'll end the session at 5 p.m. sharp. Yeah, okay. okay. Thank you so much. Any press points you suggest to improve our focus and stress out? I would suggest start your day on a calmer note, meditate in the morning, get up a little before your office starts, plot out your day, plan it out. So when you start working, your work goes smooth and Try to keep your professional and personal life separate. I know it's a little difficult when you're at home. But if you try to keep it separate, at least you zone out from your professional life and come out to your personal life. If you're mixing both of them, you'll feel you're working all day. And that's going to really stress you out. Try to create a boundary and take frequent breaks. Go out. At least in evenings, if your work permits and you get time, go for a walk in the morning, go out in nature, maybe to some park or something. Wear a mask, you can go for a walk or some kind of exercise. It really boosts your you know, energy levels and boosts your mood a lot. So that's the only thing that I can tell you in these times to stress out. We can't even go out much. These are only basic things that we are allowed to do now. So exercise for spondylitis is uh, given in the PPT for the next section. Basic neck stretching exercises and strengthening exercises are also been uh, shown there. Apart from that, you can look out for uh, neck isometric exercises with TheraBand on Google. I think they'll have to look out because I can't really be showing that now here. So that would really help spondylitis. Next, strengthening with TheraBands. Once, please go to the slide where the back pain exercises. I, I'm sorry, Shiva, I think you'll be sharing it, right? Yeah, uh, I will be sharing the presentation with everyone and also the link uh, to the YouTube uh, session uh, once the session is uploaded on our YouTube channel. Yeah, okay. I think pretty much we've covered all the questions. Yes, Dr. I think we've covered uh, all the questions and uh, thank you so much, Dr. Riddhi, uh, for answering all the questions uh, that are in uh, in our minds and that it's been troubling us uh, for, for at least days or months. Sure, there are some questions in the chat also. Oh, yeah. Should I answer them? Yeah, so this one question says, uh, can military neck be reversed? Yes, definitely it can. Okay. You can try out ISTM. If it is uh, not genetic or hereditary, yes, it can be reversed. Definitely. I have myself treated one case with that. ISTM works wonders in such kind of cases. You go regularly, maintain you know consistency with your treatment. Definitely it will work. Okay. So another question that we have is, uh, I have a hump between the shoulders. Any remedies? Hump between the shoulders, yes. That's because of forward head posture. So you can try chin tucking. You can try wall standing. Stand against a wall and try to tuck your chin 
and try to touch your head to the wall and stand like that for around 2 to 3 minutes that is going to you know relax your neck muscles and slowly it is going to get rid of your neck hump and also keep in mind always uh, be mindful of how you are standing when hump in the neck comes because of your forward head posture whenever you are using a phone or any kind of device don't keep your head bent down for a long amount of time keep them up on uh, like your laptop at your eye level or keep your phone like this on in your hand and watch like this yeah doctor i think we have a follow up question from amrita regarding the military neck she says yeah. how long does it take to get it corrected through physiotherapy uh i think maybe a month or so maybe a month so great yeah uh i think uh, that's it doctor riddhi yeah thank you so much once again for answering all the questions and uh, for a informative and really really eye opening session uh, like this uh, definitely people would go back to their desks and rethink about this and start working on their postures and start exercising and and live a better life especially uh, you know pandemic uh, we go we are all going through a pandemic so i think we'll we'll open our eyes realize and and make efforts to make our body and mind um, be at a good place <clears throat> one more question shiva i would like to answer here since i think that's actually important okay. someone who has mentioned but isn't egg yolk rich in cholesterol yes it's extremely high in cholesterol in cholesterol one of the most uh, one of the foods containing the highest amount of cholesterol that is why you can take egg yolk only for at the max two eggs in a day oh at the max. not more than that it is around 1100 mg of cholesterol that's like too much so but egg yolk has to be eaten because that's you know one of the very few sources containing vitamin d so you can eat it for one or two eggs just you can eat egg white got so uh, thank you everyone thanks all thanks to all the participants for joining in today and giving us your valuable time i hope you all had a a uh, good time here learning about a lot of new things and i hope you will all start exercising and and live a better life thank you so much that will be the end of the session today and we'll see you next friday for our next session thank you thank you dr riddhi thanks once again thank you so much dr thank you